When you evaluate limits, the first thing you'll always want to do is just plug in the number and see what happens. If you end up getting some other number, you're finished. So plug in x equals 3, you end up with 3 times 3 squared minus 5 times 3 minus 4, which is 3 times 9 or 27 minus 15 minus 4. 27 minus 15 is 12 minus 4 is 8. So your answer is 8. For this one, plug in the x equals 2, and you end up with the sine of 2 pi minus 4, and the sine of 2 pi is 0. 0 minus 4 is negative 4. Easy enough. On this one, we'll plug in the 4, and we end up getting 16 minus 16 over 4 minus 4 which is 0 over 0. This is an indeterminate form. For AB, there are two indeterminate forms that you need to worry about, 0 over 0 and infinity over infinity. For BC, I'll have a separate video with some of the other indeterminate forms that you'll have to deal with. You have two options uh, on how to solve this problem. The first is to factor the numerator and then cancel any like terms in the numerator and denominator. To get 8. The other option is to use L'Hopital's rule and whenever you use L'Hopital's rule on the AP test you need to make sure that you indicate that you're using it then take the derivative of the numerator, derivative of x squared minus 16 is 2x, and the derivative of x minus 4 is 1, and then plug in your x uh, equals 4 value to get 2 times 4 over 1, or 8. Either way, you'll end up with the same answer, and either way is fine. You can use L'Hopital's rule anytime you have an indeterminate limit of 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. So here are a couple more examples of where we could uh, end up using some of the other methods. So if x is approaching 9, this ends up being 3 minus 3, which is 0, over 9 minus 9, which is 0, or another indeterminate form. So we can either use L'Hopital's rule and end up with 1 over 2 root x, that being the derivative of root x, in the numerator, over 1, which is 1 over 2 times the square root of 9, or 3, which is 1 sixth. Uh, alternatively, you can also multiply by the conjugate. So if you choose to do it that way, you can get the limit as x approaches 9 of root x minus 3 times root x plus 3 over x minus 9 times root x plus 3. In the numerator, that gives you x minus 9. And so, when those x minus 9's cancel, you just end up with 1 over the square root of 9, which is 3, plus 3, which is 1 sixth. For the second one over here, you can either factor the numerator and the denominator and cancel, or you can just use L'Hopital's rule. I think it's easier to use L'Hopital's rule. Uh, but before we do that, we'll want to confirm that this is 4 minus 10 plus 6 over 4 minus 12 plus 8, which is 0 over 0. So using L'Hopital's rule, we'll end up with the limit as x approaches 2 of 2x minus 5 over 2x minus 6, which is 4 minus 5 over 4 minus 6, or negative 1 over negative 2, or 1 half.
if we plug in 0 here, we'll end up with the sine of 0, which is 0 over 0, so another indeterminate form. This one is a limit that you should memorize. It can easily be found using L'Hopital's rule. We'll end up with the limit as x approaches 0 of cosine x over 1, or just cosine of 0, which is 1. So you'll want to remember that the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x is equal to 1. You want to remember that for the AP test. It comes up quite often. This is another one that comes up fairly often. When you plug in 0, you end up with 1 minus 1 over 0, or 0 over 0. So once again, using L'Hopital's rule, we can turn this into the limit as x approaches 0 of derivative of 1 is 0, derivative of negative cosine is positive sine, so sine x over 1, which ends up being the sine of 0, or 0, over 1, or just 0. So you'll want to know for the AP test that the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine x over x is equal to 0. Another good one to know and have memorized. If you end up with something like sine of 7x over 2x as x approaches 0, once again that's 0 over 0, and you can take the derivative of the top using the chain rule. That derivative is 7 cosine 7x, seven and the denominator is just 2. If you plug in 0 for x, you end up with 7 times the cosine of 0 over 2, which is just 7 over 2. For this one, if I plug in 0, I end up with the sine of 0 to the 4th, which is 0, over 0 to the 8th, which is 0. But applying L'Hopital's rule here repeatedly um, will cause us to get some derivatives that are really unpleasant. So a better way to look at this one is to break it up so that we have the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of 2x squared over x squared raised to the fourth power. So we have sine to the fourth of 2x squared over x squared to the fourth, which is the same as x to the eighth. If the coefficient on the x squared in the denominator was a 2, then we could turn this inside part into a 1. But since we put in a 2 into the denominator, we also have to multiply the numerator by a 2. So in order to evaluate this limit, we need to pull this 2 out to the front, because a constant inside a limit can always be pulled out. But it's not just a 2, it's 2 to the 4th power. 2 to the 4th power is 16. So we have 16 times the limit as x approaches 0 of sine 2x squared over 2x squared, all raised to the 4th power. The limit here is just 1. So we end up with 16 times 1, or just 16. And lastly here, we'll need to split this limit up into two different limits. We'll turn this into the limit as y approaches 0 of 2y over 4y, plus the limit as y approaches 0 of sine of 3y over 4y. We need to do this because if we plug in 0 for y, we end up again with 0 over 0, another indeterminate form. So for the first part of it, the limit as y approaches 0 of 2y over 4y, you can simplify the 2 fourths into 1 half, and the y over y cancels. So we just have the limit as y approaches 0 of 1 half, plus on this one we'll use L'Hopital's rule to get the limit as y approaches 0 of 3 cosine 3y over 4. The limit of a constant is the constant, so we have 1 half. And if we plug in 0 here, this is 3 fourths, because the cosine of 0 is 1, and we have 3 times 1 over 4. And 1 half plus 3 fourths is 5 fourths.